Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about a condition that I think, whether you're a pharmacist, a nurse, or a patient, it's something you should have an understanding of because we get it all the time. And it's linked to a cough. This could be with or without mucus, all the greeny stuff. So I'm going to lay it down for you exactly what you need to be looking out for. And if you're a pharmacist, we're going to be touching on what sort of symptoms you could treat within your pharmacy and if you're a nurse potentially prescribe so as always like subscribe to the youtube channel and look pharmacists if you're struggling to find a doctor to supervise you if you want to develop your clinical skills and you want to learn more in advance then get in touch with us at medlearn because we're going to be showing you from start to finish so you can do it safely so as usual folks follow me and let's have a look at exactly how we can treat this condition itself Right, so before I go any further, my colleague Farouk, who's actually making this video, mentioned don't use the title bronchitis because I don't know what that means. Talk to me about the signs and symptoms, what will happen if you're a patient. Essentially, this is for someone who has a cough and they may or may not be producing phlegm or the gunky stuff, okay? And they may have a low grade fever. And when I mean low grade fever, I mean that it's below 38 degrees. So anywhere from 37.5 all the way to 37.6, 37.8, all the way up to 38 but below. And remember, we're not talking too much medical here, so it's a crude definition. So don't worry about it too much, folks. But that's what we're looking at. So let's talk about bronchitis. Farouk, bring yourself here. I'm going to show something first. Just bring yourself here to this picture here. I'm going to draw this out for you folks so you understand what we're talking about. This is going to be your lungs. This is the trachea. And we have the large and the small airways. That's what we're focusing on here. Now, as you can see, this will continue to branch. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller here. We know that air will enter the tubes here. And then eventually will make its way into these little sacs. And these sacs, let's say alveoli, this is where we have the exchange. This is where we're going to start to take in oxygen and remove carbon dioxide and so on. But this condition, which is bronchitis, affects the large and medium airways. So we're talking about this, the primary bronchi, and we can go up to the secondary bronchi and so on. So it's the big airways. It's where the air enters in and then starts to make its way to the alveoli where we have the gas exchange. So what we're not doing is it's not affecting here. This is the area where you get the gas exchange and this is where we end up having pneumonia. You end up having COVID-19, for example. This is a problem. That's important to understand that this condition here is just affecting the major airways where we have the movement of these gases. That is bronchitis. So what is bronchitis? Bronchitis is inflammation. And you might be wondering, what is inflammation? Think about it. If I was to get a hammer or even this paracetamol and strike my finger, what would I get? I'll get swelling. I'll get pain. I'll get heat. I'll get redness. That's exactly what is happening in these tubes. So it's inflammation of these tubes. And the symptoms include, you end up getting a cough, and you may or may not have the mucus, you feel tired, and you may have a very low grade fever. 38 degrees is a fever, a low grade fever, and let's write this down here, is let's say 37.5 degrees, all the way up to about 38 degrees, or less than 38 degrees. So that range there. And remember, this video is not for medical purposes. I'm just giving you a general outlook on bronchitis. If you're a patient, you know what can be done. Go to your pharmacy or to your doctor. If you're a pharmacist, you can highlight gaps where you're lacking in understanding. And we cover this in depth in our videos where we go through the entire bronchitis, signs, symptoms, management, diagnosis, guidelines, pharmacology, you name it, we do it. So that's a bit about bronchitis. So how common is this? How common is this? How common is this? What we find is around 44 people to 1,000 people or 44 people within 1,000 people every year suffer with this. 
So it's something that does happen quite a lot and it's more common in the winter months. Why in the winter months? Because in the winter we're all together, we're cuddling up, we're coughing more, so we can spread this infection quite fast. So winter times we see a huge spike in this cough, with or without gunk and a low grade fever because one, we're all together. So we're coughing, <laughs> we're sneezing and we can spread. Two, lack of vitamin D. So we know in the winter we have less sunlight and so that can affect the production of vitamin D and melatonin, both of which play an important role in your immune system to fight infections. We're not going to go into this in depth. For folks who want to learn this properly, like if you're a pharmacist and you want to diagnose bronchitis from start to finish, we'll go into this. But for now, just a general overview. So when do we get this? More in the winter months. Makes sense. What is the condition? Inflammation or swelling of the large airways. My colleague is listening because hopefully Teja is going to be in a position where she has patients, she can see patients and address them, which is the best place to go. So she's actively listening. And my colleague, Mr. Bilal, is always smiling because he's a huge TikToker, but he's shy. I don't know why he's shy there, but he's shy at the moment. But let's ignore these folks because they're just, it's not what we're looking for. Let's get back to the point. So, inflammation of the large airways. 44 people in every thousand people get this. More common in the winter months. It's a lower respiratory tract infection. With that being said, let's think about what causes this. Key thing, mainly viral. Why am I highlighting this? It's because we don't need antibiotic to treat this. It's a viral infection. So we don't have to dish out antibiotics because the more antibiotics we use, the more there's a chance of antimicrobial resistance or antibiotic resistance, and that's not good for any of us. So it's viral. We have the viruses that we have is influenza A and B, we have coronavirus one to three, we have the normal respiratory viruses, and we also have the SARS COVID virus as well, which basically caused COVID-19. So that's the main ones. Also in terms of bacterial, rarely it can be caused by bacteria. Mycoplasma pneumonia, we have chlamydia pneumonia, and they have bordetella pertussis, all of which are bacterial, but can also cause the disease itself, but it's rare. The main thing is it is viral, and the treatment is viral. What have you learned so far? What is bronchitis? It's a condition that causes swelling in the large airways. You get cough, you get maybe mucus production, and you have a low-grade fever, and you don't feel well. It's quite common in the winter months. What's it caused by? Mainly viral, okay? Now, let's talk about risk factors. What is gonna put you at risk of this condition? Number one, smoking. Folks, smoking is not good for you. It can increase your risk of developing these infections, which is not good. Number two, if you have a low immune system, maybe you're diabetic, maybe you suffer with HIV, or maybe you suffer with asthma and other conditions that can lower your immune system. So it's never gonna be good for you if you have that. And folks, always being stressed, having a bad diet, all of which can affect the human body and which then can also affect your immune system. So these are some of the risk factors, but the main one's gonna be smoking. If you suffer with asthma, you have a low immune system, if you're in a crowded environment, or put your risk of getting this cough and tiredness and generally feeling unwell and low grade fever. So that's the risk factors. What does happen? Well, look, we have these large airways. What's gonna happen is your body has to respond. When your body responds, it does a process called inflammation to heal the area. But in healing the area where you get swelling and you get pain, you end up getting symptoms of bronchitis, which are cough, number one. You may or may not have sputum production because your body starts to produce more greeny, gunky phlegm to trap the bacteria, but that irritates you and causes you to cough and you produce the greeny stuff. Also, as you know, one of your body's response is to release certain, what we call, I would say, certain chemicals that allow the body to connect with each other and communicate, we call these cytokines. They can then lead to fever. So your body itself then releases these cytokines and my colleague just said, hmm, because she's a pharmacist as well, so she obviously recognizes this, but they can cause fever. So we can get a low grade fever. So we have this low grade fever, we may have mucus production and we end up having a cough. So these are basically what ends up happening. But you might be thinking, well, actually, which other conditions can cause similar symptoms, but is not bronchitis? Number one, a simple upper respiratory tract infection. So that is your sore throat, that is your cold that you end up having, 
and that is what we call post nasal drip where you end up having a cold that goes backwards and makes you cough you can have this you can have pneumonia what are the symptoms of pneumonia bilal pneumonia pneumonia any ideas no no okay cold. so does it know uh anam symptoms of pneumonia uh, Yep, main symptoms. So, a pneumonia is different. A pneumonia, like my colleague mentioned, you'll have a low, high-grade fever, shivers, chills. You may have a cough that produces mucus, but you're going to be unwell. Because we know pneumonia starts to affect the tissue inside the lungs that's involved in the exchange of gases. Okay, so that could be pneumonia. But if you have a pneumonia, you will have a cough, you'll have a high-grade fever, you're going to feel unwell. And trust me, you're going to be tired, you're not going to be well. We don't get that with bronchitis. With bronchitis, you have a cough, you may have a low-grade fever, but yeah, that is pretty much it. So it could be pneumonia, it could be upper respiratory tract infection. What else could it be? It could be TB, but again, to get TB, you need to be in an area that has TB. So maybe you travel, for example, from a third world country that has TB, and it's a long-term condition, so you're going to be in well. It could be, God forbid, something that affects the heart. But with the heart, you'll also have shortness of breath. And you may also be coughing up blood, for example. You could have a clot in the lungs itself. And again, you'll have shortness of breath. You'll be coughing up blood. Again, we don't get that in bronchitis. So we can see that bronchitis is distinct. A note that I want to mention is about whooping cough. And in this condition itself, you end up getting this cough and you vomit after the cough. That's important to remember because then we're looking at bacterial causes. So it could be upper respiratory tract infection, cold symptoms. It could be pneumonia, high-grade fever, shivers. It could be something like whooping cough, where you cough, 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 and then you vomit afterwards. And you have a very particular style of cough. It could also be something like uh, TB. But again, you're going to have aches, shivers, and you're going to be generally unwell. These are the main ones. It could be medication-induced. Like maybe you have high blood pressure, and we give you something like an ACE inhibitor. That can also cause a cough, so it could be that as well. It could be heart-related. And I've explained to you with this heart rate condition, you might also have shortness of breath. You might find that that could be something causing problem. Could be asthma. But with asthma, folks, you're normally going to be diagnosed at a younger age. And it's quite easy to diagnose if it's done at a younger age. So it could be that as well. So keep that in mind. Right. How are we going to treat this? Let's say you have bronchitis. Deja, any ideas how to treat bronchitis? What could we recommend? Inhalers. So potentially... We could give inhalers to open up the airways, that's one thing. Anam, any ideas how to treat bronchitis? Uh, bronchitis, bronchitis with, uh, with the inhalers and with the steroids and uh, with painkillers and with just, uh, with just medication or with antibiotics. Right, she's 99% right, but we don't want antibiotics, big cross and antibiotics, unless it is bacterial or, or if the patient has symptoms that suggest she's very unwell, like a high grade fever, has maybe underlying conditions that put her at risk or if the clinician feels it needs it. So we're going to give Anam a tap on the wrist to say no antibiotics, no, no, no. We're going to treat it with over-the-counter remedies. Let me show you what we could give. Farouk, follow me. So we're not promoting any particular brand here, but this sort of stuff would work quite well. So we could give something like for a dry tickly cough. We could give something like, for example, with Cavonia. These sort of over-the-counter remedies that can help with the bronchitis itself, just to relieve the symptoms. So over-the-counter medicine is good. If your chest is hurting, maybe you can have some ibuprofen, maybe some paracetamol. You could also try some lemon and honey, but the evidence isn't too strong for it, but some people do find benefit to help soothe the throat. But that's the major treatment. So Farouk, follow me. So the main sort of treatments that we're looking at, and I'm just going to double check we've covered everything, over-the-counter. So products that help relieve a cough. Get it from a pharmacy. We could consider something like inhalers, but again, that would be for those people who are really struggling to breathe. Maybe they have a wheeze. Again, that depends on the doctor itself or the clinician or the prescribing pharmacist or nurse. Antibiotics, no, unless the patient is very unwell or has conditions that suggest it's bacterial. So we don't recommend that. Honey, yeah, you could try honey as well. Also, staying hydrated. Hydrated and good food. Having your vegetables, having your greens, having low processed food will always, always make sure your body can fight the infection itself. Right, when do we start to get worried? We start to get worried when it's been going on longer than three weeks. That's a worry. We start to get worried if your symptoms change. That's a problem. That's when we start to get worried. 
we start to get worried if you start to develop a high grade fever. So symptoms that change, my colleague asked, if you develop a high grade fever, if you develop breathlessness, if you end up getting blood when you cough, I mentioned shortness of breath, if you have a wheeze, if you hear a special sound on the chest, that's a problem. These symptoms we want to treat separately. Okay, right. Having said that, I've discussed about antibiotics, discussed alarm features. So that covers your bronchitis from start to finish. Number one, it's viral infection. Number two, affects the acute airways. Conditions you want to be careful with, pneumonia, heart failure, asthma. We also have upper respiratory tract infection, tuberculosis. These are th sort of things you want to be careful with. Now you might wonder, quickly on this, why do the viruses not work their way down to the bigger tissues? I know many ideas. Why do the viruses mainly affect the big airways and not the lung tissue? Because not the lung tissues. Yeah. They multiply, I think so, the viral infection and, you know, if we see the size of bacteria and virus, virus are more smaller than bacteria. Yep. Yeah. So I think uh, that is related to the multiplication of the virus. They feel better in the upper respiratory. Uh, She's touching on something. Basically, what happens is these like particular viruses, like influenza, parainfluenza, coronavirus, they have developed a predisposition mm -hmm. to the upper respiratory tract and also the large bronchi. The reason is because their receptors, they have the the various proteins that are required to enter the cells in those areas. When you start to make your way into the lungs itself, the environment might not be the best for them. Also, the body has various mechanisms to defend against the infection, so they don't make their way there. That's why they prefer the, the lower respiratory tract, but mainly located around the nose and that sort of area. That's why, because they've developed the tools to get inside those cells and not really down. However, we know with COVID-19 that viruses can evade the body's defense mechanisms like cough, mucus, the hair cells, and they can still work their way down, but mainly they don't affect the lower tissue. So that is bronchitis covered. For those of you who want to learn more and you want to develop your skills, get in touch with that middle learn. Together, let's make a difference and let's build a better world. Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about a condition that I think whether you're a pharmacist, a nurse or a patient, it's something you should have an understanding of because we get it all the time. And it's linked to a cough. This could be with or without mucus.